All right, so if you didn't know, uh, Caitlin Clark broke the NCAA all-time scoring record um, in their game against Michigan. Um, and while this is awesome, and I think I agree that it is an awesome thing when records are broken and history is made in any sport, um, per usual, the conversation about it and really the conversation about anything regarding Caitlin Clark has just taken a, a turn has just taken a turn that just kind of like turns me off from the whole Caitlin Clark story, right? Um, and I'm gonna address a couple things in this video, but first and foremost, I would like to say obviously congratulations because this is this is awesome, and I love to see the skill level of women's basketball continue to rise. As a fan of the sport in general, like it's awesome to see how players are evolving and what's becoming possible now and, and, and kind of getting a glimpse into what the future of women's basketball is going to look like. Um, as a basketball coach, like, it's awesome. Um, it revitalizes my love for the sport and revitalizes my, my desire to stay active um, coaching and kind of active in the community. So it's awesome. And I love when stuff like this happens, and I really like that the conversation has spread outside of like the diehard women's basketball fans, and is touching uh, basketball fans and just general sports fans and just people who are general generally fans of of victory and triumph. Um, and that's awesome. It's awesome for the sport, and it's awesome for a lot of other people not named Caitlin Clark or not named whoever the center of attention is, because that's also how those folks get the attention they deserve and get recognized. Um, if they were kind of flying under the radar. So I really believe this is a win-win-win for everybody involved. And I just want to start off with saying that. Um, but that kind of brings me to my first point, where it's like the pomp and circumstance surrounding this record-breaking event has been like something that I feel like unprecedented in women's college basketball. Um, and it's crazy to say that because obviously it was a record, which means it happened before. And it wasn't really that long ago that Kelsey Plum even broke the record. Let me look it up real quick. I want to say it was like 2019. And none of the noise is being made for uh, 2017. Okay, none of the noise that's being made for Caitlin was being made for KP. And that's fine. Like, obviously, the sport is growing. This The last year's March Madness being a viral social media sensation type thing has has allowed a lot of casual fans to enter the conversations around women's basketball. So obviously, like, it's going to be different. It's going to be done different. Um, but I think now that, that we have the platform that we've been kind of working to build towards for all these years, I think now is the time to kind of go back and, and kind of redo some of the things that we didn't get to do for like a lot of our historical and awesome players. Like there would have been nothing wrong with the network showing like a Kelsey Plum feature, like a road to her breaking the record or having the record and kind of letting people get to know her because that increases exposure for the league, increases, increases exposure for the sport. And it actually places Caitlin Clark in the context of the history of women's basketball. Um, as a way that maybe people who just started watching basketball last spring weren't necessarily aware of or don't necessarily know. Because we hear a lot of conversations about like, oh, Caitlin Clark is the greatest of greatest women's basketball player of all time. And the only person that's going to ever say that, I mean, besides Shaq, I guess, is a person that is has not been familiar with women's basketball. And even for Shaq to say that as somebody who's constantly flexing on Charles Barkley about the fact that he has championship rings and nobody could tell him shit. Caitlyn hasn't won anything, so she can't tell nobody shit. Like, she hasn't won anything, and it's not like she hasn't got the opportunity. She's obviously had the team to get to the finals, but they couldn't put away LSU last year, last spring. They lost by, what, 27? Like, she's had the opportunity. She has not been able to close that door. So why are we calling her the greatest of all time when we have the greatest of all times? Like, it's even debatable who it might be, but it's not Caitlyn. Right. We have the Candace Parkers, the Brianna Stewart's, the Maya Moore's, the Cheryl Miller's. Like we have women that we would place on that Mount Rushmore of women's college basketball. And I don't think Caitlin's up there yet. And I wouldn't put Kelsey Plum up there either. So if Kelsey Plum is not up there, then it's like, why would Caitlin be up there for breaking that record? Neither one of them have won a championship. They have just as many championships as me. So it's like, I just cannot get behind the Caitlin is the greatest and blah, blah, blah. Um, when we've seen her before, 
she's nothing we haven't seen before. She's Kelsey Plum with like four and a half more feet of range, which is awesome. She's an awesome player, uh, highly skilled when it comes to scoring, but she's not all around yet. Um, you saw KP go in the league in her first couple of years, getting really just until like this last year's playoffs, she was getting exposed on defense 24-7. Caitlin does not play one lick of defense, and that is not going to the pace of the WNBA, the skill, the average skill level of the players, and the and the dedication they have to their craft. That those three things are gonna are gonna drastically impact the freedom at which Caitlin Clark plays basketball, and Angel Reese and everybody else. Like it is a highly, highly, highly competitive, highly skilled league. Only the the best of the best and the cream of the crop are going to thrive there, which is why you see players who will maybe log an average of 90 seconds per game during the regular WNBA season, going overseas, playing 36 minutes and dropping 45 and 10. That's why that discrepancy is so large, because this is these are literally the best female basketball players on the planet. So it's like to think that just to think that they're going to allow her to shoot, you know, these 40 foot three pointers without playing defense, like, Jackie Young is literally going to break Caitlin Clark. Like, I need us to be so serious about the level of play at which she's actually going to be expected to have to elevate to when she gets to the league. And there's 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 no doubt in my mind she's going to struggle in her first year. Um, and like I said in my previous video, there's no doubt in my mind she's going to adjust and come out of that and, and continue reaching peaks as a player. But I need us to stop with these narratives that she's like the second coming of basketball Jesus because she's literally just Kelsey Plum with a better three-pointer. That's it. The other thing, I feel like it's hard being a girl. It's hard being a girl in sports because people expect you to really just like, people expect everything to be ladylike. Like when it comes to competitive spirit and all the other stuff, like all that's wiped off the table when we're talking about women for some reason. I don't understand why. But the responses I've seen to people saying that the Michigan players are full of class and and just so such good sports for writing a letter to Caitlin Clark after she hung 50 points on them. That is actually like the most embarrassing thing I've ever heard in my entire life. Like, you're a, are you not a competitor? Like, are you here to help Caitlin Clark break, break records or are you here to win games for your program? And the fact that y'all let one player score 50 points on your team not one lick of defense was played. You're taking pride in that. Like if I was their coach and a player came to me with that idea, they would never stop running for the rest of the time I work at that university. That like, that is such a, that, that just shows a weakness in your competitive spirit. Like your lack of actually wanting to win. Why are we here? If you, if you, if you're on this basketball team to be a fan of Caitlin Clark, Transfer to Iowa and go stand in the student section. There is no reason for you to be on the court wearing a Michigan uniform. Like, that is literally the most insane thing I've ever heard. And it'd be stuff like that that makes me, like, not necessarily resent Caitlin Clark, but resent the fan base that she's allowed to or that she's caused to come into basketball and start, like, influencing behavior like this and, and propping up behavior like this. Like, this behavior would not be celebrated under any circumstances in any other sport involving a man. Imagine if we heard the 49ers were telling Patrick Mahomes, like, oh, man, we're all such big fans of you. Like, thank you so much for kicking our ass. We're so glad we could be part of history. You getting your third Super Bowl MVP. Like, we would all be calling them all types of names I'm not about to repeat on YouTube. And and it would be deserved because what are y'all doing? You're a competitor. Like, act like it. So that's like one of the things that I hope we can work through like very quickly as far as a community that, that engages in, in, in the discourse around women's sports. I need people to know these are professional athletes and they're here to compete and they're here to, to fight for the recognition and the fight for like their legacy and everything else. They're not here to prop up who y'all think is just the next coming of white Jesus to the basketball world. And I need us to like be very clear about that. But yeah, that's pretty much all I had. Again, congratulations to Caitlin. Um, I hope I hope we continue to see history being made this March Madness and then in the next WNBA season if she decides to come out. Obviously, we got some some people who were lottery picks that are now saying 
they don't see themselves leaving their program. Um, so we'll see this NBA, this WNBA draft as we approach is going to get very, very interesting. Um, but yeah, congrats to Caitlin. Congrats to Iowa. Uh, if you have anything you want to say, leave it in the comments. You can follow me on Twitter at Koi underscore. Uh, and yeah, that's it. See y'all next time.